we're in Canada because a boot. Wow. Not it's a boot. boot. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, this, uh, welcome back to Trail Trash Garage with Jeff. Again, I apologize for my voice today. <clears throat> I did an unboxing video earlier there, and I just had to apologize for my voice. So I'm not feeling the best. But I, I want to get this done. Uh, can't get a lot of work done in the garage because it's uh, cold out there. Uh, we're going to be doing a seat today, okay? The going seat. So in a previous video, you would have seen me shaving the foam and doing all that good stuff uh, and getting the seat ready. And then I stuck this cover on it for now. So really quickly, I'm going to go through the stuff I'm going to be using. So we've got some uh, LePage Heavy Duty Contact Cement which uh, we may or may not need to use. Uh, we have uh, sewing scissors. I'm not allowed, nobody gets to use these scissors for anything other than, than uh, for material. Staple gun. And we have uh, one quarter staples. So everybody that does this says you should be, you should use a, uh, uh, air gun an air staple gun but I don't I don't own one so <laughs> uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see how this works out with this okay and then we have a heat gun just in case we need it in case we need to heat the vinyl off to stretch it a little bit and we have vinyl so this is marine grade vinyl from a local fabric store and it is stretchy one way not stretchy the other way so stretchy not stretchy Okay. I think you can get four-way stretchy vinyl, but not, I don't know if it comes in the marine grade. So, see. Right. Okay. So, on the Trail Trash ADV uh, channel, we've gotten a lot of questions about this seat cover. Colin has one on the V-Strong, and I have one on here. Uh, and it's called a sit and fly. Let me see that. Yeah. So, uh, made by a guy in Israel. Um, there are some copycats I'm seeing now uh, popping up on uh, Instagram, I think it is. Uh, anyway, so as ugly as this is, or it may be to some people, this is probably what's going to go back on the bike and stay on, on the goal wing. Um, I don't think it's going to make its way over to the DRZ. But if it does, I'll probably end up getting a smaller one. It does add a bit of, a, a bit of uh, thickness to the seat, or which is I don't really want to make the DRZ seat any taller. However, so uh, it has a few benefits though. In, in that type of a scenario, um, or when you're touring, for example, the water just runs through this and sheds off. It doesn't like it doesn't sit here. Like if you've got one of those king and queen seats on a touring bike. And you're sitting here water will just puddle in here and even on your on your gear that's waterproof it eventually will sink through it'll soak through i mean um, so this just allows that water to shed off and it keeps your bum up off of that and in the hot summer uh, time uh, you'll get sweat around the back side of your butt and uh, on a multi-day trip they, they they call it monkey butt so uh and it's basically just like an irritation a rash sort of thing and a lot of times it'll hit with in the backs of your legs, right where the edges of the seat hit. So again, this keeps your bum up and allows airflow in underneath there. Now there's all kinds of stuff. Colin bought an air hawk and it just didn't, it doesn't, they don't work. I don't find they work. Maybe they work for you. Some people will buy a sheepskin. Uh, that seems to work because it sort of does the same thing this does. Um, this is just a little less, I don't know, I think sheepskins don't look as great. So this is just a little more attractive even though this you know arguably is not a, the best looking seat so why am i talking about the seat cover well i'd like to do a stitch seat something that looks good and the xt when i redid the xt 500 seat i had a local upholster do it and it wasn't that expensive he did a very good job but i'm thinking well if i'm going to just cover it with this seat cover anyway which is what i did to the xt seat um do i really need to spend a couple hundred dollars having a local upholster, upholster her do this. So I think I'm, uh, uh, I may just try to do this myself. Now I've covered seats, like I bought a seat cover that's already molded or made for a seat, a replacement cover, and then done that. 
So, but I've never actually done a seat cover from scratch like this. So, uh, I think that the shape that I have here is going to be okay for a non-stitch cover, but we're going to find that out today. So let's get this off. And basically this is how it, 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 it attaches. So you've got two Velcro straps here, front and back, and then, uh, this plastic strap or, um, elastic strap. So boom. There we go. And it just slides on and off the front or back. It would be easier to take it off the back. Boom. There we go. That's really all there is to that. So this is just some garbage bags I put underneath there because I was actually, when I was test riding the gold wing, uh, I had to put the seat back on. So I just put some, some, uh, garbage bags over it so that I wouldn't get a bunch of crud into it. Ooh, it's kind of dirty. Probably should clean that up. So what I got here is a little bit of foam they call scrim and it's really, really thin, thin foam. And what it's supposed to do is kind of go over the seat and smooth it out. And I was just debating on whether I was going to use this or not. Um, it will take out some of the imperfections I did the sanding, but I'm wondering if I should put it in two pieces. One to kind of go over there. There's also this in the back. I think there was like a, a high density pad was put in there. You can see it right here. I don't know if there was one up front for the, I wonder why there's one in the passenger. There's not one on the driver. Oh, there is one for the driver. Yeah. So I think that's a factory thing. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It looks like it was, well, I don't know. Somebody could have cut into that. Somebody knew what they were doing. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, I guess. So, uh, I think I got the shape basically the way I want. It's fairly even. You, sometimes you could sit and chase, yeah, it's not perfect there, but you can chase, chase this as much as you want. Oh, and take a little bit more off, take a little bit more off. Now, again, you have to bear with me. There'll be some heavy editing here because I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So, okay. So I cleaned those up on the wire wheel. So what we'll do, we have these spacers in here. And we're just gonna put these nuts back on it for now. And that'll keep that in there. Uh, because once we get everything put back on, you're not going to be able to take those off. Then when we're uh, ready, we'll just be able to take those nuts off, put the, put the cleaned up and repainted seat stays back on and call it good. Get our phone back on. Now let's get our scrim. I'm probably going to need a marker for this. And my only concern is where I chop this off, we're not going to, we don't have a lip. So our staples are going to be going directly into this, which is kind of what I got the, the double side or the uh, contact cement for. Okay. All right. Got myself a marker. <clears throat> so, scrim foam. All right. Probably right there is good enough. All right. <clears throat> So here is the spray adhesive. So nothing.
So this is a product by Permatex, heavy duty spray adhesive, but this is just like the, uh, oh, what's that other brand name? 3M77, I think is the other stuff. Clean and dry from any contaminants. Yeah, sure. Shake cam well before you, I sort of shrug it. Turn nozzle, yeah. Low, medium, or high. Oh, I didn't know how to do that. Huh. Uniform overlapping coats. Two to three uniform overlapping coats. Allow a minimum of five minutes of drying time between coats. Apply additional coats in opposite direction from the first for stronger bonds. Apply adhesive to both surfaces. Allow adhesive to dry for five minutes until it becomes tacky before setting. Press surfaces together with uniform pressure. Limiting air pockets bond should be made within 30 minutes of application. One quarter staples, universal fit for the arrow or Stanley TR45. Of course, this isn't either one of those. All right, so we've let that spray adhesive set up. Now I'll have to trim that. I'm just wondering, I'm just debating in my head whether I want to glue it around to the underside, which I have seen them do before, before I put that down. And if I do, I may use this stuff if I do that. Sorry, this stuff. Cause my staples are not working. I think I got the wrong staples. I'm back. And yes, I got the wrong staples. So I need T50 staples, not T45 staples. Now, I was able to find some T50s, but they are three eighths, not one quarter. So, which is too long, apparently, to the wise old internet. So, we may just start this a little bit and then I'll see. Let that go for a few minutes and then we'll wrap that around. Then we'll cut the trim off. We'll ah, trim, cut the excess off. All right, let's start getting this. I just want to emphasize to you guys that this is not a tutorial on how to do this. This is just what I'm doing, as I say all the time. 
Meh. Could be worse. Okay, we want the stretch this way. Suggested that mark a center line. Okay. I know I'm just eyeballing this, but like I said, it doesn't have to be super perfect. Yeah, let's see if it's not gonna work worth shit. Okay. Mm. Well, that's about where it is. Now, if I stretch that, pull it and stretch it to get it in there. All right, so in the videos I watched, and I watched a professional do this, um, he said, so he's he wants to stretch it that way to kind of conform it, but the sheet he was doing didn't have quite this amount. And see, this is where you would normally stitch. So you would stitch here, and then you stitched here, so you'd have a two-piece seat. But I don't really want to do that. I think... That being the only thing, I think we could probably get away with this. Worst case, none of this works and I have to cut all this off. And I made a mess. Which, honestly, is possible. Okay. All right. These are just temporary because these staples are not working. Okay.
Ich bin ein bisschen ein All right, seat is done. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not. So as you can see, there's a little bit of bunching here, a little bit of bunching here, and a little, bunching a little bit of bunching back here, okay? And I think if you could spend a little more time really smoothing that out, then I think you could get it. Like, and it's all, the technique is all in how you're, all in how you're pulling it. Now I'd used, I, because I had the wrong staples, or, you know, or, or what, not the recommended staples, um, I decided to try to use some of the spray adhesive. And that was probably a mistake because along the back here, it did, it did impede a little bit getting stretched because you'd stretch it and then it'd want to stay stuck to the foam underneath or it'd want to stay stuck to, where that where that stuff was going to stick it um also like the odd cut i put around the back of the seat um shortening the seat up all the rest of the seat has got lips but the back of it doesn't it's kind of like flat like you see what i mean like it does it has no lip here, around here like you're curling in so now that'll all be obstructed with the back of the um the led taillight but that did make getting around these bends here really hard. Um, this seat probably could have benefited from uh, a sewn seat. And maybe maybe this is the project I should. This is probably simple enough of a seat that maybe I should have done that. I should have tried. Um, uh, should have tried actually doing the, uh, the sewing. But like I said, it's going to be underneath the, the cover, the, the sit and fly. I imagine so you know I chased my wife out of the house with the with the, the smell of the spray adhesive um, it gets everywhere like the the glue the glue stuff with the brush probably would have been better but the setup time was a lot longer with that and it wasn't as tacky um, you know I could have probably used that and waited to you know waited to 15 minutes for things to get tacky but then I didn't know how much working time I'd have with it getting things stretched. So uh, would I do this again? Basically, after saying the downsides of it, it was a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of stretching, a lot of uh, wiggling with mediocre results, you know, depending on, on what you think, right? <sighs> have I seen better seats on, the, on YouTube? Yes, I have. Have I seen worse? Yes, I have. So... The staples actually didn't work too bad. Um, they're only three eighths, so it's not much bigger than, than the one quarter. And the, the key the key is that you're gonna get the bunching. So like through here, you're gonna get bunching underneath. And it, so it's all in, in, in how you manage your bunching so that it's little tiny bunches so that you don't get the bunches on top, right? That's how, that's how, how it goes. Now. I might be able to get some of these out, maybe with a little bit of heat. Maybe I'll do a little heat gun. But you know, honestly, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, for a first attempt, like this probably bothers me the most out of any, any anything right through here. But uh, honestly, I don't know. Like it's, maybe I could have stretched that a little bit better. Again, the, the adhesive probably wasn't my friend back there. Uh, 
heating it up, it helps reset the adhesive a little bit. But I think I tore up the scrim foam while pulling it off and stretching, pulling it off and stretching. But I mean, overall, I don't know. It's 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 not terrible. <laughs> so uh, if I was doing a show bike and it was something that I wanted to, uh, to really look good, then you know I probably would just pay the couple hundred bucks to the local guy and have him upholster it. He, he does a wonderful job. And I mean, the seat obviously the seat would look better with a double stitched seam right there. So it had two pieces. This would have probably came out perfect. So, yeah. But you know what, it, it's fine for now. Uh, I can always change it down the road. Um, I'd flip flop between whether, you know, I'm ever gonna take a passenger on this or not. So I might wind up, may wind up getting another uh, seat pan for it with the king and queen or something. I, it's hard to say, but anyway, I'm rambling from now. Not bad. It was okay. Um, if you want to tackle this and you got the patience and time, you don't mind the smell and you don't mind the mess, then, you know, you can get good results, decent results anyway. Right. Um, if you really need to save that, uh, that money, especially if upholstering is really expensive in the area where you live or, there are people are hard to find or something so yeah uh, i think i'll call it a night for now if you want to see more of these types of videos like and subscribe for jeff trail trash garage we'll catch you in the next video you know we're in canada because a boot, <laughs> <Not> a boot. <laughs> sorry